cost behavior. In order for management to make good decisions, they've got to know how their costs react to changes in volume, and that's where we, as management accountants, can help them. Some costs are fixed costs. It doesn't mean they don't ever change, it just means they don't change in proportion to volume. So if we're managing a hotel, our fixed costs might be things like property taxes, like depreciation, like pool maintenance, like uh, cable TV, like uh, salaries of the hotel uh, department managers. And some of these are fixed costs that are committed, and some are fixed costs that are called discretionary, like we might spend some money on advertising. And the formula is very simple for this. If management wants to know what our total fixed costs are, in other words, what our Y value is, Y equals 100,000. Variable costs vary in proportion to sales. So the more guests we have at our hotel, the more our costs as far as toiletries go. For example, a bottled shampoo, bottled conditioner. Same thing for a breakfast and refreshment hour. If we've got more guests, we have a higher cost for breakfast and refreshment hour. The formula here for total variable costs is $3 per guest times the number of guests. The formula here for breakfast and refreshment is $10 times the number of guests. And that way management can figure out what the total variable costs are going to be. The more complicated cost is the mixed cost. It has a fixed portion and a variable portion. Let's say this is the utilities for the hotel. So even if we have zero guests, we still have to heat the lobby, we still have to have the light on in the parking lot, we still have to have the sign lit, etc. But with every guest, our utilities cost goes up. So this management accountant has deduced that the formula is $8,000 worth of fixed utilities cost plus $8 per guest. In other words, the total utility cost is 8 times the number of guests plus the fixed portion of 8,000. Sometimes the breakdown between the fixed portion and the variable portion is obvious. For example, if we have a retail store and we owe our landlord $10,000 of rent per month plus one quarter of 1% of sales, the fixed portion and the variable portion are set out right in the description of the cost. However, with our utility bill, what we'll have to do is do some analysis. So here are our monthly guests, that's going to be the x-axis, and here are our total utility costs, that's going to be the y-axis. Let's create a, sc a scatter plot to see if that helps us understand what's happening here. So I'm going to highlight these two columns. I'm going to, in Excel, I'm going to hit Insert, Charts, Scatter, and I can pick it up and move it, which I will do, and move it out here and make it a little bit bigger. So everything came out nicely. Uh, if it picked up the wrong data, if it had the X's where the Y's, the Y's where the X's, I can right click on the plot area and select data. In fact, why don't we change the title? Edit, it wants to know the series name. Let's see if I can type utilities. Cannot. Utilities, cost. And then we'll hit okay, hit okay again. And now that title changes. All right, so now I've got my uh, scatter plot. What do I do? We're trying to figure out what the intercept is here and what the slope of this line is. The intercept will be our fixed portion and the slope will be the variable portion. The high-low method says look at the high point and the low point. Assume that that change is the variable portion and everything else must be the fixed portion. The highest point is this point here, 209,600 for 25,200 guests. And the lowest point is this point here in January, 114,000 total cost for 13,250 guests. So we take the highest, 209,600 minus 114,000, which is the lowest, per change in guests. The guests went from 13250 to 25200 So that means $95,600 of 
change in the total utilities cost when guests change by 11,950 so our dollars per guest are eight dollars the slope of this line is eight dollars that's our variable portion now that we know the variable portion we can figure out what the fixed portion must be let's start we can either use the high or the low point to do this let's use the high point so if the total cost is 209,600 when we have 25,200 guests 25,200 times eight dollars means that the variable portion must be 201,600 if the total cost is a 209,600 and the variable portion is 201,600 that means the fixed portion must be about 8,000 okay that's the high low method we used only two of the data points what if instead we used all of the data and asked Excel to find the best fits line the one that does the best job of describing this cost behavior and we can do that in Excel I'm going to highlight this information I'm going to go to data data analysis I'm going to click on regression and I'm going to hit OK it's going to ask me the Y range which is correct the X range which is correct and I'm going to ask it to put it into a new worksheet and it's going to give me the information I want so instead of just using two data points Excel used all 12 decided that the intercept was 14,538 the slope was seven dollars and eighty five cents so our formula looks a little bit different than what we guessed using the high low method we had said that the formula is eight dollars per guest plus eight thousand if we use all the data it looks more like seven dollars and eighty five cents per guest plus fourteen thousand five hundred and thirty eight and if we look at the r squared number here 0.9472 that's a pretty high R square, which tells us that this is a pretty good relationship between the formula we just created and the data. And another reason we need to know uh, the difference between variable costs and fixed costs is because of contribution margin analysis. This is the income statement we're familiar with. This is called absorption costing in the sense that fixed overhead got included in our cost of goods sold if you remember from previous chapters materials labor and overhead both fixed and variable overhead got included in work and process that went to finished goods that went to cost of goods sold well that can lead to some bad business decisions so instead for internal purposes we're often going to use a contribution margin income statement sales minus variable costs gives us contribution margin minus fixed costs gives us operating income and there's no place on here for mixed costs so we have to break them down into their variable portion and the fixed portion using either the high low method or using excel to do regression analysis